And the, the, oh, like yeah. golfing is, is, is as simple as standing there and hitting a ball in a particular direction, but the interior experience of how you perceive oh. that and then the, and the consistency and how to remain in the present, but mindfully present in the moment with each shot and not think about the, the previous one or the next one. It's, it's a challenge. Yeah. And furthermore, you can't try to work. This is a really funny thing. Why not? Yeah, sure. Well, is there a part of you that bemoans leaving the project of how to live well in your past? Um, What do you mean, how to live well? Um, Don't we all have that project as Christians, sinners? Sure, sure. I mean, but intellectually, though, I mean, that was your focus on how was how to live well in in a scholarly sense. It's it wasn't how to uh, you know increase your uh, you know portfolio. It, it, it was, I mean, I, I, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for the time where, where I learned philosophy and theology from you, which informs all of my psychology. If I didn't have mm. that, I mean, I have no, I'm rudderless in trying to help people. It's not as if, mm. I mean, from an, from a spiritual perspective, from God's perspective, yeah. I mean, which do you think, which, which do you think he values more? <laughs> you know? Well, look, the course, the kind of course I taught you, I also taught Ivan Marie in university for six or seven years, how many years I was there. Mm. And I, I think I have a lot of students like you who, um, I don't know if I required as the assignment in your course that you keep careful notes and you hand in your notes, but I have students who walk around with this kind of thick book of 300 pages of notes mm. that they took in my course. And it's like a guide for their lives. And, and that's good. But, you know, on the other hand, I mean, I did that for 10 years. So we don't have mm. to do everything forever. Um, sure. And, and I, I do, I do fold a lot of that into my teaching of professional ethics and into yeah, my te- yeah, teaching yeah. of political economy. But I yeah. think the, the other question is this kind of project of becoming an authority or, uh, you know, a recognized expert. And okay, so that was, you might want to say my goal, I want to become the top, uh, most you know, respected, admired Aristotle scholar in the whole world it was probably my goal, right? Um, and that, and, and there's always with this kind of thing, a kind it, you need to be at the right institution, you know, so, you know, get a position to Cambridge or Oxford or Harvard or something like that. So that matches what your abilities are. And, um, I, I've left that world and I'm glad that I've left that world for two reasons. One is that, um, it's too narrow a world. It's turned in on itself. It, 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 the people are involved in questions and problems that, are probably too scholastic. They probably shouldn't be uh, human, really smart human beings probably shouldn't be spending their lives working on these problems. But then there's a tremendous play of pride, envy, arrogance, competitive spirit in the bad sense, ambition in the bad sense. Mm. Um, you know, this, you're talking about, um, you know, trying to promote yourself. Well, that can be nasty, as we know. There's something Definitely. I think e- even worse in academia. This kind of you know struggle to be the most honored or the most distinguished. I think it's really of the devil, and I I was too easily caught in that because I do have a sense of the noble and the kind of the the in, you know, my inherent goodness of really good scholarship. Sure. So, uh, so go ahead. No, I was just I know I'm thinking. I've been thinking a lot about this question myself because. Uh, you, you know, I, I would like to get to heaven someday and to explore my interior uh, just landscape in terms of what is motivating me to put out a podcast mm. and whether or not that's driven by some sort of psychological ru- wound from my history or lack of affirmation that I received such that I'm overcompensating. And then I will finally be loved if the whole world hears Dr. Brian's podcast well, it's not as simple as all that. I'd like to think I'm generally well-intentioned. I mean, it's, I mean, in my mind, consciously, it's more of an effort to, um, you know, spread the good news. It's long mm. and short of it. I mean, it is to yeah. serve others. It is to create a space where people can dialogue once again uh, in in a cancel culture world, where uh, you know it's an anti-cancel culture show. Let's bring people of different perspectives and faiths and come together and be able to connect on a human level. So there is the high ideal which is driving me. But does that need to be purified? Absolutely. Is there a thread of my own ego and narcissism 
as part of the project? Definitely. And I'm thankfully I've surrounded myself with colleagues who are also do what I do. And when mm -hmm. we come together and talk about these things and we talk about why I'm feeling as stressed as I am about it at certain times, like, why am I stressed about this? If this is God's work, then it's God's work. Then mm -hmm. he'll make it grow. And I don't need to really concern yeah. myself about it. Yeah. But if I, if, if it's about me and, and a, the false idea that I'm going to receive, then, then that's, that's an empty project yeah. and it's not good for my soul. Yeah, absolutely. There is always that temptation. You know, fortunately we're you and our Catholics, we're not, Lutherans or Calvinists who believe in the total depravity of human nature. So if yes. you're like that, you think there's no way out of that out of that box. You're always going to be selfish no matter what you try to do. But we mm -hmm. don't think that. We think it's a matter of correcting, just correcting your intention. As Definitely. you said, purify. So it's very easy to go a little bit off the rails by exaggeration, can be concerned about how many you know likes you're getting, how many views you're getting, yeah, exactly. you yes. know, how much attention you're getting. Yes. Um, but then just correct. The, you know, we don't have to fret about whether we're caught in this box of narcissism. We just correct our intention and move on. It's really very simple if you're a Catholic. Yeah, yeah and I, I trust as much as I can. I, I'm growing in trust uh, to the Holy Spirit here. And and just recently when I talked about, when I started to unearth these things in myself with the help of, of colleagues and friends, um, and I started to let go and detach from desiring the views and was more present mm -hmm. in my life with my family and friends or my or my day <laughs> job, my full, my full time job. Well, guess what God does then? Well, now it starts to grow. <laughs> right. Now it starts to grow in a way that I couldn't have anticipated or planned. Some random tweet that I threw out there or, uh, you know, certain certain guests or, or, you know, just the right moment of what was pop popular in the news that happened to launch when I uh, was discussing a given topic two months before with a guest and that caught some synergy. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's not huge right now, but in terms of the rate of growth, the show is doing well. But yeah. that's all happened outside of my worrying about it. Yeah, just pray and trust in God. And, and that's the only, the, the best and the only course. You know, I love golf because it teaches so many lessons of life. <laughs> and two weeks, two weekends ago, I was at um, a conference for the Heritage Foundation because my wife was on a panel at this conference. And it was at a place called the Cloisters on um, Sea Island, Georgia. And um, I don't know any of those places, but this is like Myrtle Beach and yeah, yeah. Uh, Kiowa Island. Just really Jekyll Island, like really, really beautiful, mm. ritzy places. And this hotel, the Cloisters, the G8 uh, summit meeting was held there in 2003. Like it's really posh. It's like really the top five star type place. So yeah, you know, just to be in that world is, and, and not be paying a lot of money for it is kind of fun. But I, uh, I, I, one morning, I brought my golf clubs. I played something called the Seaside Course there, which they have PGA tournament there. And mm -hmm. I did very well in, in a 20 mile hour in a wind, wind. I shot, shot an 82. So your, your guests who, who know about golf will be impressed by that because it's not an easy course. But that's not important. I'm not here to brag about shooting 82 on the, on the, on the Seaside Course. What I'm here to say is what exactly what you're saying that throughout this round, you're engaged in this battle against, your own thoughts about yourself. Yes. So when you, when you, so when you begin to think about your score, I, I've just parred four holes in a row. You yes. know, you're going to get a double bogey on the next hole. Yes. You have yes. to keep your intention pure and yes. just say, I'm going to try to strike this ball the best I can and let the score take care of itself. It's that's yes. exactly what you're talking about. That kind of inward turn thing where you turn to yourself away from your work, away from what you're the excellence, the good you're trying to do. And you just, mess everything up. So yeah. trust in God, yeah. do your good work and just don't worry about that. Yeah. Golf is a very projective enterprise, I think, Yeah, you know, because it's just you and yourself and the, oh, the, like yeah. golfing is, is, is as simple as standing there and hitting a ball in a particular direction, but the interior experience of how you perceive yeah. that and then the, and the consistency and how to remain in the present, but mindfully present in the moment with each shot and not think about the, well, the previous one or the next one. It's, it's a challenge. Yeah. And furthermore, you can't try too hard. This is a really funny thing, right? You have to be serious. You have to be collected. You have to be concentrated. But once you start yes. really trying, yes. or even, you might even say really caring, yes. then it doesn't work. Uh, it's, right. so, it's so puzzling and interesting, but I think truthful at the same time.
Yeah, I think it's it's important to go golfing with good friends because then you can focus on one another and not on your game as much. It's, mm-hmm. it's a helpful distraction. Um, I I'm also it comes to my mind as you were talking about uh, how there happens to be a score. I'll never forget a conversation I had with an exorcist once who uh, was helping me in my clinical work. And uh, he was talking about how the devil loves competition. And I pushed back a little bit and I said, well, wait a minute. We're, we're, we're not ever allowed to be competitive. He said, no, no, we need to nuance it. So the pursuit of excellence is a wonderful thing. It can manifest um, God's, om- God's omnipotence. Um, it's the, it's the uh, exercising of our gifts and our virtue. And we want to do our best. But if it's competitive in terms of ranking myself above or below someone else, mm. I'm putting someone down to feel better about me, which is yep. the temptation. That's a yep. problem. Yep. So the, the way out is to want to do your best and want your opponent to do their best. Mm. And then there happens to be a score. But literally yep. wanting them to do their best, even if, it's better than, even if that's better than your performance. Yep. Well put. And that's good sportsmanship too. So you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're never supposed to root against anybody. And, right. and if you get beaten, you want to be beaten by somebody who's doing really well and gra- right. congratulate on them. It's just, it's very beautiful. It's very human and it's not devilish at all. It's the opposite of devilish. You know, this, the screw tape letters are just such a, such a great example of a kind of malicious hierarchy. Yes. yes. Have you read and, them, and, and, screw tape letters? I, I've been, I've circled around them. I think if they've been assigned in classes and I've read the Cliff's Notes and I've talked about them. So, enough, but so I, you I have can't to, go you deep. can listen to them. John Cleese. You know John oh, Cleese from Madi Padma. He yes. and A Fish Called Wanda, which which is a hilarious movie, but we you know it's a little bit um, off color. We have to warn your 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 watchers, <laughs> but it's hilarious. But um, you know he he did a recording of um, a screw tape letters, and yes. it's just brilliant. Yeah, you have to get that and listen to it. I will. Yeah, yeah. And and what was the um what was the the what came to your mind when you were thinking about the competitive screw, screw tape letters? Screw, screw tape letters is um, a kind of um, uncle demon mm-hmm. advising a nephew demon I'm how to trip up people. and tempt. And yeah, he's yeah. assigned to this one guy to corrupt and tempt him. Uh, but there's the, the um, I'm pre- if I remember correctly, it's by C.S. Lewis. The um, notion that they use for, domination is actually an eating metaphor so you devour the demon who's below you and you get devoured by demons or above you it's it's yes. not service but it's consumption actually um yes so it's this kind of you know we talk about dog eat dog it's that sort of thing in, in hell yeah yeah you know there's something besides competition is making comparisons so a lot of saints will say well don't make comparisons so it's a thief of joy yeah. right yeah right exactly Mm-hmm. And it, it uh, I think it sucks the gratitude out of your spirit. Oh, it does. Yeah, how true yeah. that is. And and it's easily refuted by uh, w- when someone uh, experiences jealousy or envy of someone else by mm-hmm. a way of comparison. All you have to suggest is that, okay, I'll give you their life, but all of their life. You can't <laughs> cherry pick the things that you yeah, like. Good point. <laughs> yeah, very good and, point. And, and then it quickly becomes, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. yeah. Exactly. Yeah.